The CT2000 turnkey package with available automation controller is the most advanced commercial scale ultrasonic liquid processor on the market. You can reliably produce top quality cannabinoid nano emulsions in-house at a very competitive price point. Start by placing your ultrasonic power supply atop your lab table. Now we'll place the ultrasonic sound enclosure to the right of the power supply. Insert the ultrasonic stack stand into the sound enclosure. Now we'll mount the ultrasonic stack on the stack stand at the booster. Plug in the ultrasound cable to the back of the power supply. Now connect the other end of the ultrasound cable to the top of the transducer. We'll connect an air line to the air fitting atop the transducer. Then we'll connect the other end of the air line to an air dryer unit. Now we assemble the magnetic drive pump. Insert the O-ring, make sure it's fully seated. Place the impeller and the barrier inside the pump housing. Then we mount the pump head and affix the tri-clamp. Now we install a hose barb adapter on the pump outlet. and a quick disconnect adapter on the pump inlet. Now we place the pump to the right of the sound enclosure. Next we assemble the heat exchanger. We have the top assembly with quick disconnect, flow meter, and flow diffuser several tri-clamps, and we have the heat exchanger body along with flow control valve. And then we have the bottom assembly with flow diffuser and quick disconnect. First, attach the upper assembly to the heat exchanger body. Next, we'll install the lower assembly Finally, we mount the heat exchanger using the included wall mount bracket You can also use this bracket to mount the heat exchanger to the side of the sound enclosure Now it's time to assemble the tank. Remove the lid clamp. Remove the tank lid assembly. Insert the Venturi mixing dip tube. Place the lid assembly upright upon the tank. Reinstall the clamp. Now we mount our thermometer thermo well assembly in the cone of the tank. Finally, we install the sample valve. And our tank is complete. After placing the tank to the right of the pump, we're ready to connect the silicone hose. We use a 16 inch length to connect the pump to the flow cell, and we use a 24 inch length to connect the flow cell to the heat exchanger. Liquid flows from the pump through the flow cell to the heat exchanger. We use another length of tubing to connect the top of the heat exchanger to the Venturi dip tube in the tank lid.
Finally, we use a larger diameter tube to connect the pump inlet to the tank bottom valve. Now we place our automation controller and peristaltic pump. We connect the sensor and power cables to the automation controller. First we connect the flow sensor, then the pressure sensor, then the cooling control valve. Finally, we attach the serial cable, which interfaces with the power supply. Now we plug in the power connector, and we're done. Into the back of the power supply, insert the other end of the serial cable. This will act as a control and monitoring interface. It's time to assemble the filter housing. You'll see all of the various components of the filter housing laid out. You'll notice there is an outlet and an inlet side to the base. It's important to keep this in mind during assembly. There are three legs, each of which is numbered. Be sure to match the numbers to the numbers on the filter housing base. We install the legs, tightening fully. Now we flip over the base keeping in mind of the position of the inlet and outlet. We installed the gasket, and now we install the housing body. It is ideal to have the bleed valve on the top of the housing body facing the inlet. Install the pressure gauge. We install a hose barb adapter on the inlet side of the filter housing. We install an outflow valve on the outlet side of the filter housing. Finally, we attach a 90 degree hose barb adapter onto the outflow side. Now it's time to install the bleed and drain valves. Install the bottom drain valve. Finally, we install the top valve, which is the bleed valve. The drain valve will remain closed during operation. The bleed valve is necessary to remove air from the housing. We place the filter housing assembly to the right of the peristaltic pump. Now we attach a length of tubing to the tank outlet. We mount the tubing in the peristaltic pump head. Now we securely connect the other end to the filter housing inlet. Before a run, you'll need to install a sanitized 10-inch Code 7 filter cartridge, ideally rated at 0.2 microns. Place your chiller in a well-ventilated location and attach the chiller hose kit, making sure your hose clamps are securely fastened. 
Now we connect the other end of the chiller hose kit to the heat exchanger, making sure that the chiller outlet is connected to the lower heat exchanger inlet. And there you have it. You've assembled your system and you're ready to run your first batch.